right now. Joining us from Cambridge, England, is John Burns, London Bureau Chief for The New York Times. John, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Uh, so uh, our reporting was that, that uh, Rupert Murdoch, as well as his son, um, James Murdoch, may not have to testify at all before Parliament because they are not U.K. citizens. What are you hearing about that? Well, it's actually true that the subpoena power, as it would be called in the United States, does not, uh, of Parliament, does not affect uh, non-UK citizens. But I think that would be a ruse which would simply dig the Murdochs into a much deeper hole. I think there's already been some discussion about how healthy it is to have such a large uh, portion of your media uh, owned by people who are not nationals of the country. Um, and I think to accentuate that at this critical moment in all of this would not be helpful to Mr. Murdoch's cause. And so for people who are just sort of learning more about this and saying, okay, there were was, there was some reporters from News of the World that hacked into some phones. We've seen that uh, issue grow, uh, allegations far-reaching uh, from that paper into other papers, perhaps The Sun, perhaps The Sunday Times. But what is the significance of yes. uh, this inquiry now, this judge-led inquiry that's taking place uh, in British government into what was going on with Murdoch's newspapers? Well, it's very significant indeed. Uh, we, we now know that this will continue to roil the British political landscape, uh, not for a few days or a few weeks, but probably for two, three, four years, certainly throughout the life of the present government, which is only in its second year and is, is set to govern uh, through until 2015. Mr. Cameron, in the House of Commons, remarks that you uh, mentioned as you opened your report here, uh, described this as a firestorm uh, for the press and the police. What he didn't say was that it was a firestorm for him personally as well. Um, there is a potential in all of this uh, for this to drive a further wedge between the two governing parties here and ultimately to cause an election. That may be some way off, but there has been no uh, turmoil in British politics to compare with this. I would say uh, almost in my lifetime, but certainly uh, in the last uh, 30 years. The uh, financial impact could also be significant, is proving to be uh, significant already, but one of the uh, big things is that there are now apparently calls on along uh, both party lines for Rupert Murdoch to drop his bid to acquire this big company, this British Sky Broadcasting, saying that it might not be in the in interest, uh, national interest as these investigations continue. How big of a hit is that for Rupert Murdoch's media empire? It's a, very, it's a very big hit indeed. In British constitution, if I could call it that, and political practice, what is going to unfold this afternoon and this evening uh, in the parliament here is of fundamental significance. All three major parties, accounting for more than 600 of the, of the 650 seats in the House of Commons, will be voting for a resolution moved by the opposition Labour Party that calls for Mr. Murdoch to abandon that takeover bid, which would be one of the biggest, if not the single biggest, I believe, uh, media takeover bids in the history of this country. It will fundamentally, of course, affect uh, the future of News Corporation, uh, because in my view, at least, a vote in the House of Commons by all three parties asking him to get out of that bid um, is probably going to end the bid for all practical purposes and uh, cause News Corp to go back to the drawing board and refashion its future. And if there is a, an investigation here in the United States, because apparently Senator Rockefeller here uh, is calling for an investigation into whether News Corp broke any laws in the U.S., uh, how does that then affect News Corp? Well, it's very serious. I mean, uh, as, as you know, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act in the United States makes criminal uh, practices uh, in foreign countries by American-based corporations, American-owned corporations, to be uh, criminal in American law as well. Now, I think we may be getting ahead of ourselves yet because there is no uh, evidence yet, uh, certainly none that could uh, sustain a criminal action, uh, that there were any criminal acts by news corporation executives or executives of the British subsidiary News International. Of course, that has been widely alleged, but I think we need to wait and see uh, as some of the, the dust clears in all of this to learn, as we will do, with a judge-led inquiry which has uh, a power to, to force people to testify, 
uh, and the, the now revived and much more vigorous police inquiry, we're going to learn a lot more as to who did what and when. Uh, but all of that's some way down the road, and it needs to be said that for the time being, News Corporation executives led by Rupert Murdoch and his son James and the chief executive of their operations here in Britain, Re Rebecca uh, Brooks, have all denied uh, knowledge of or criminal involvement in any of these activities. Right. That is absolutely worth noting. John Burns, New York Times, London Bureau Chief, thanks for your insight on this story. We appreciate it.